God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm the pastor, Bishop Ramon de Maria. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Today, we are going to do part three of our message series titled, What is Truth? Our opening scripture, or our main scripture here, is the Gospel of St. John, chapter 18, and verse 38, which reads, firstly from the King James Version, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Always keep that in mind, the words of Pilate. Now, in the Bible, basic English renders it, Pilate said to him, True, truth? What is true? Having said this, he went out again to the Jews and said unto them, I see no wrong in him. But yet Pilate handed him over to the Jews to be crucified. Now, today we will open up with Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, which reads from the King James Version, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So we're going to read it again from the uh, Bible in basic English. In no way, but let God be true, though every man is seen to be untrue, as it is said in the writings, that your words may be seen to be true, and you may be seen to be right when you are judged. So, let me say this. You cannot take a poll in this world in order to find out what truth is. You can go down the street and ask people and write down what they say. And what, what do you think is true? You will never get the same answer. You must look to God and His Word as the only source of the ultimate truth. That's it. The only true book is the Word of God. And we know it as the Bible. Why do you think that people have tried to get rid of the Bible, ban Bibles? Because it's true and they don't want to face the truth. They want their own truth. If you remember last week we talked about truth. People want to believe what they want to believe. And if they believe that sinning is, is okay, to them that, that's truth. If people want to believe that there's sustainable life on another planet, they're going to believe it. You'll either believe what God says about creationism or what man says about evolution. You're going to believe one or the other. You can't believe truth. You can't be partial. Either God is true or man is true. Either God speaks the truth or man speaks the truth. You can't have a little bit of each. It will not work, okay? When we left off last week, we talked about all truth comes from God. Today, we're going to talk about, as we start, truth reigns supremely. Truth trumps over everything else. Everything that man says, God's truth, his word, overtakes it. It trumps it. You know how when you play cards, you know, you have your trump card, your trump card overtakes every other card. God's word overtakes anything that the world may say. God's truth is absolute. You will not find anything wrong in God's word. It is absolute. It overrules everything. Truth reigns and has the final say in every matter. That's the word of God. Truth is sovereign in all things. Remember these key points that I want to give you. I'm going to give you three points. One, truth is never, never relative. It is never relative to something else. You can't judge that against anything else. God's word is true no matter what anyone says. God's word is not arbitrary. God's word is not, or let's say truth, is never conditional. It doesn't depend on something else to make it true. If you believe it or not, if you don't believe it, that doesn't mean it's not true. Or if you believe it, it's true. God's word is true. Truth is always true. That'll never change. Truth is always conclusive and unconditional. Everything outside of truth is false by definition, while everything inside the truth is true. Everything in the Word of God is true. Over the ages, they tried to disapprove the Word of God. Then God allows man to find some truth, find some part, find some scrolls, find things in Israel, find the Bible, the book of Isaiah, the Dead Sea Scrolls. He allows things to be found where it proves truth. And what? That the Word of God is true. Now, if you remember what we just said in our verse, that God be true and every man a liar. See, by contrast, Satan is a liar and the father of lies. And his servants speak his negative 
tongue of falsehoods. When you are not in Christ, you cannot speak the truth. You may believe it to be truth, but you cannot speak the truth. Because truth only comes from God. So if you are in this life and subject to the flesh, you cannot speak absolute truth. Because you don't know absolute truth without the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that comes from God through the Holy Spirit. Now, you may not lie as much as somebody else, but you're still going to lie. You may not say as many cuss words as somebody else, but you're going to. Because you have the flesh. You may not get as angry as somebody else, but you're going to get angry. And sin. Truth only comes from God. And any created being, like Satan and his followers, cannot speak the truth. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, Satan is the god of this age. You see, this is the age of the church, the church age. But Satan goes around deceiving people, trying to draw them to his way of thinking, for his plan and his purpose, which is to thought the things of God, which is to convince people that Jesus Christ isn't the Messiah, that God isn't God and God doesn't have power. He wants people to think that he has power. That's why he has people that are worshipers following him, killing in his name, offering sacrifices in his name. He has them all fooled. Satan is the ruler of this present world. You can see that in John chapter 12 and verse 31. He rules this world of sin, but God is in control of everything. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. And we know that because Satan held up the angel, Gabriel, from bringing Daniel's answer for 21 days. You don't see it. So you can't see it. But there's a war going on. There's a war in the heavenlies going on. You can't see it. Because it's a spiritual war. The spirits, the, the good angels and the bad angels, they fight constantly. When you're praying, they're trying to stop your prayers from going up. When you're praying and waiting for an answer, they're trying to stop your answer from coming back. That's why you see that in the book of Daniel. It's a, a spiritual warfare taking place in the heavenlies. Read Ephesians chapter 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but evil spirits, Satan and his demons in heavenly places. Which means anything above what you can see, okay? Above the clouds that you can't see. You can't see with your human eye. See, the evil world system is filled with Satan's lies. And ultimately speaking, there are two fathers only in this world with two families. The first family is made up of those who belong to God, which are those that believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord. And they alone hear the truth. And the second family has Satan, the devil, for their father. And they reject the truth of God, just as Pilate did. So what does that tell you? It, it go, I mean, people are going to say, you're wrong, preacher. You're wrong, preacher. Uh, I had a, a father that, he was a godly, holy man. He didn't go to church, but he never hurt anybody. He never told us about Christ, but he was a good man. He worked for the family. He gave, made sure we, we went to school. He made sure we had clothes. They're going to try to stick up for the father. But the truth is that, that you have you can have two fathers. You have to choose which one you're going to serve, God or the world. You're either going to serve the God, the creator, or you're going to serve the God of this world, the little G, which is Saint, either one. You can't serve two. You can't walk the middle of the fence. And you're either in or you're out. Good people don't make it to heaven. Right. Only people that acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. He came to save that which was lost. Lost work. In the garden of paradise because of sin. Look what happened immediately. When they sinned in the garden, all hell broke loose. They got thrown out of the garden of Eden, the utopian place where no disease, no sickness. You don't die. Nothing. That's what happened. Because they listened to the wrong voice. They didn't accept what God said by faith. And they turned. I don't know how many years it was. How, how do I know? But the fact is, they did it. And there is a garden of Eden. That's proof. It was. It, there is a real place. And guess what? And it's all true. Another point is that truth is objective. Now, I'm going to give you some points, okay? Matter of fact, ten points. One, truth is not propositional. It is stated in clearly defined words that have a precise meaning. Have you wonder why now they want to make the Bible gender neutral? Stuff like that? Yeah. Some people come up with that crazy. You can't make the Bible, what, God is going to be neutral? When the Bible says God, as a noun, God is masculine, Christ is masculine. So, I mean, they started all that crazy stuff years ago. And some people are believing it. God is not neutral. 
what it says about God is the truth. And there's only one God made up of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, we're Trinitarians. We believe in the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Two, truth is concrete. It's solid, okay? Truth is black and white and narrowly defined. It never blurs the lines of distinction. You can't change it. What the Word of God says is true. I mean, I've heard all kinds of stories about gray areas in the Bible, this and that and that. No, sin is sin. Sin is rebelling against God. When you sin, you rebel against God, whether it's commission, omission, whatever. Sin is sin, and you'll stand before God and answer for that sin one day. Truth is, read the Ten Commandments. Read the Ten Commandments. That They are truth. One through ten. And you must apply them properly. And when you look at them, the Ten Commandments, you will see that, hey, you need a Savior. Because you cannot possibly keep the Ten Commandments. You break one, it's like you broke every one of them. God is supreme. And you must believe that His Word is truth. If you don't, you broke the commandments. You broke the first commandment. <laughs> I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. That's it. Anything else becomes your God. If God our Creator isn't God, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit isn't the ruler of your life, you're following the world. Your Father is the devil. Period. Three, truth is never vague or fuzzy. It is razor sharp and focuses like a laser beam. You know, point it, boom. What you point it on, it's there. It's not vague, it's not fuzzy. It's not all blurry, yeah, 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 you, sh you know. Truth is what it says it is. If God says something, you cannot change it. It is truth, it is perfect in every way. No matter what you say, you can never change the truth. Four, truth is explicit. Exact and crystal clear in its meaning. Thou shalt not, it's thou shalt not. It's not thou shalt not, but only in cases of this, or but if this happens, it's okay to do this. No, it's explicit, right to the point, straight ahead. It's just like straight and narrow. Anything else will get you to the point of truth. Five, truth is factual, rational, and tangible, which means substantial and capable of being touch. You can find truth if you want to find truth. Read the Word of God. You want truth about life? You want answers to the questions about life? Read the Word of God. You don't have to read all these psychological books to find out what's true and what's not. You don't have to read 50 million books or articles to find out what's truth and what is not. It's right here in God's Word. Six, truth is not based on subjective feelings but upon objective facts. Read the Word of God. If somebody says that Jesus really didn't die on the cross. Read the Word of God, friends. Read the Word of God. Somebody says G uh, God didn't rest on the seventh day. Read the Word of God. Read the Word of God. If it says that, somebody says Jesus is really coming back. Read the Word of God. Okay. Not on what. Oh, what? You know, I feel like most of the Bible is true, but I feel like some of it isn't. Wrong. It's not on what you feel is true. It's what is really true. Okay. Seven. Truth specifically is contained in the written Word of God. Specifically, all truth is written in the Word of God. You know how many books you see? Oh, a compliment book, compliment book to the Bible, and this and that. And you know, if you read some of these helps, biblical helps, you can really get messed up. If you read five commentaries, you can get five different reasons why it could be true or it can't be true. <laughs> read the Word of God first. Read the Word of God. Pray. Ask God for wisdom. Yes, you can read some of these uh, commentaries, but when you read them, pray before you read Even devotionals. We have devotionals. Pray before you read the devotional. Because it says devotional, it doesn't mean that what they're saying can be applied to your life. Okay? But everything that is said in the Word of God can be applied to your life. Eight. Truth does not have to be believed in order to be truth. God's Word is true. If you don't want to believe it, that doesn't mean it's not true. There's a heaven and a hell. I say how many times? There's a heaven and a hell. You're going to go to either place. If you don't want to believe it, that doesn't mean that there isn't a heaven. That doesn't mean that there isn't a hell. Okay? Period. Because you don't believe it, that doesn't mean it's not true. Nine. When God speaks... He speaks what is truth. He spoke and man wrote as a spirit moved out. Here it is, 66 books. God speaks what is truth. And 10. God has not stuttered or mumbled when he has spoken his truth. God didn't stutter. Let there be light and there was light. It happened, right? Period. When God speaks, things happen. So, well, for today, that's where we will stop. Because I can't rush through. 
this next part, okay? I gave you 10 points about truth is objective. Read them over. Listen to this video. Listen to the audio portion. So very important. If you could grasp these 10 things that were said, nothing will, no adversity, no lie will ever impact your, your thought process about what truth is. Nothing will because you will have it imprinted in your mind, in your spirit, about the objectiveness of what truth is. Read your notes over, listen to this, to the audio portion, or watch the video again. Truth is truth. What you read in the Word of God is what really is. And no matter what man thinks, he will not take away. It doesn't change what truth is. It will never change it. No matter what, you can put in something, add something, or take away something. It doesn't make it any truer or less truer. God is truth. He speaks the truth. Christ is truth. He died on the cross, rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven, and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, interceding. The thing is, you can believe that or not believe it. You can believe that when you die, you're going to go to heaven with or without Christ. That doesn't make it the truth. Jesus said, the only way to the Father is through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one cometh to the Father except by me. You can try all these religions. You can be a good person, but you won't make it to heaven without Jesus Christ. Because you believe you can get there another way, or some religions preach you can get there another way, that doesn't mean that is true. What do you believe today? We believe that the only way to the Father, the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. If you want to believe that today, you can go to heaven. You can have eternal life. And I want to offer you the opportunity to go to heaven. So if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to lead you in a prayer today. If you're not sure of where you will spend eternity, I want to offer you the opportunity to receive Christ. Because truth is, Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. And He wants to be your Savior if you accept Him. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I heard the message today that speaks about truth and Jesus Christ being truth. The Word of God is the truth. The Bible is the truth. And they agree. They are one. I believe it today. But I'm not sure of where I will spend eternity. I want to make sure today. Therefore, I want to repent of my sins and receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and he ascended into heaven as a guy sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty. And from there he will return to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. And I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord so that I will go to heaven either when I die or Jesus returns to take me with him. I confess my sins and I repent of my sins. And today I believe that through my repentance and belief in Jesus Christ, I am assured that I will go to heaven when I die and that I have eternal salvation. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer today, you repent it and meant it from your heart, let me be the first to welcome you in the kingdom of God. Now what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders, tell them what happened, ask them to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you don't have a Bible, ask them to give you one, ask them to mentor you, to help you to grow in your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. And be faithful in your service to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And follow the prompting, the direction of the Holy Spirit. Then what I would like you to do is contact me at Abundant.Grace at ATT.net and tell me what happened. That's Abundant.Grace at ATT.net. You can also contact us through our website at www.AbundantGraceChurch.net or through our other website at www.AbundantGraceOfMidlothian.com. You can also just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian. You can watch our videos on YouTube if you're watching it. You're watching it on YouTube right now. You can listen to the audio portion on Spreaker.com. So please, if you need some more information about our church, our outreach ministry, please send me an email at abundant.grace at att.net. And when you Google us, you will see a list of videos. You will see our radio outreach. You will see where we are on the internet. We'll give you all the information you need. Thank you. Be with us today. Our message has been, what is truth?
My beloved, a scripture, a main scripture for all this teaching is John chapter 18 and verse 38. Next week, we will pick up with part four. Please continue to listen and watch the videos and follow us. God bless you. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And thank you for viewing this video or listening to the audio portion of our message. God bless you and go with God.